every single song, when I hear the music, before the vo vocal comes in, you already like it. You already set up. So whoever would be singing it, they're going to like this album. So I said, okay, because the music sets the environment. But that's what music does. So that's why it's important what music you listen to. Welcome back to part two of our interview with the marvelous Melva Moore. As we're on the road with the Foxworth Theory, I am Eugenia Foxworth. So, you've told us things, and it's really your life lessons. Could you tell us more about your journey? I mean, because you've told us so much, but this is your life lesson. Okay, well, I'll, I'll look at it that way because um, I may be talking to people who were like I was in terms of their beginnings being kind of shaky and uh, being blessed to have different elements come into your life to give you that support. Mm -hmm. And you don't know where it's going to come from, so I'll, I'll look at it that way. Um, well, after Pearly, I guess I'll start there. Well, i I, I got to give kudos to... Mr. Philip Rose, who is the director of the Broadway show Pearly. I don't know how many people know this, but um, Philip Rose brought Sidney Poitier to Broadway in uh, mm. Raising in the Sun. He was really kind of the mentor for black people being able to enter into that racist society. And he brought um, Ossie Davis and Ruby Dee in. There were no pieces for us, so, so that's why black people didn't go to Broadway. Mm -hmm. That was one reason, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wrote pieces and you tried to get in, you would see that there were, there were closed doors. And Philip suffered a lot going through that. He, he, would get, he couldn't get theaters. He would get them, and they would get our, our, our play, Pearly, Pearly, moved to several theaters because there was just a concerted effort to shut you down. <clears throat> so I got to give him kudos for opening, opening the door for us and going through what needed to be to build that um, foundation that allowed us to come in and now say, I have a Tony Award. And <laughs> oh, yes, of course. And of course, this is all hidden. And so you did share. And actually, you taught a lot of our audience what life can be and how it ends. Because your journey is just very beautiful, very beautiful. You may not have thought it, but just right. listening, it's a right. beautiful journey. Which means I better listen to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I, Really, so I can get the worth out of, out of it. <clears throat> because when it's happening to you, you get your side of it. But that's only half the story. You've got to see what other people have gotten. And I can't tell you what you got. You have to tell me what you, what you got from me. So yes. you tell me, what, what do you think your audience would like to hear or see from I think what you're saying, what you're doing, your past, your present, and your future, once they listen to you now, what they are going to see is a manuscript chapters along the way. Because each thing that you said is a, is a chapter within itself. And hopefully a reflection of the chapter of everybody's life in some way, shape, or form, regardless of your age yes. or your demographic or your race or your color or your creed. And absolutely. Yeah. And if you did it back then when there was no internet, kudos Speaking to you. Speaking of the internet, mm -hmm. that's the new Main Street Broadway now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of going the door to door salesman as we did with agents and managers, you can press a button and be global. Mm -hmm. But you have to know how, to that, how that works. I, can I give a kudos to Mr. D. Nice, who, uh, uh, of course, we have 
one of the things that's been the foundation of, of my ability to perform so much is dance music. And that ushered me from, well, I couldn't really get a manager to help me f focus my um, life's uh, experiences into a career in recordings. That was every black person's dream because uh, we were allowed to do, we were not allowed to do anything. We fought to sing music in the cotton fields. We were never allowed to do anything. So one thing we learned, you got, you got to fight. And that's, you don't have to be black to know that. Everybody has to fight for the right that should already be, already be yours to live and to prosper. But we, ha we had to do that. But uh, <clears throat> when I was now a known person, I had to find some organization. This has all been blessings and seeming happenstance. But now you have to take that and turn it into a, a, um, a skilled team so that you can have longevity, so that you can get everything out of it that's possible. We couldn't find that. And I say we couldn't find that. Um, I'm going along the way of, um, well, I'll skip to my current album, Imagine, yes. which is executive produced by my daughter. So I'm talking about passing the mantle on to the next generation. <clears throat> and uh, in this case, um, her dad and I were divorced, so the family's not together anymore. Uh, it seems like those pieces are, are not available anymore. But she's there. The future is still here. I, I love the way that kind of just works itself out. Yes. <laughs> and so I said, okay, baby, what is it, what you want? She said, well, Mom, um, I've got some songs that Uncle Bo wants you to listen to. Uncle Bo is, is her dad's brother. His name is Bo Huggins. I've got to tell you his name because he and Charles Huggins were really responsible for all of the recording success that I've had. All of these top mm. 10 and top number ones and all over the world, they engineered that. And I was saying to you, I wasn't able to find a manager because nobody had seen a black woman who had been on Broadway that now wanted to be in recordings. And they said, well, she can't do that. I was born in that. So you couldn't tell me I couldn't do it. So I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> Don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing, even if you haven't done it. <laughs> I agree. So um, she said, he wants you to listen to these songs. And she brought me several songs over a period of actually a couple of years. So we didn't have a company. We didn't have a theme. We didn't, we didn't have a, a focus. We didn't have a, um, a dream. We didn't have an idea. She says, I just want you to listen to these songs. And of course, you love your daughter, so love wins. <laughs> so I said, OK, baby, I'll listen. I said, it's beautiful. Who's the young lady singing? She said, I don't know, but the song is for you. So now you try to, she's telling me, you try to imagine that you're singing the song. So I did, and I said, well, I think I can sing it. I don't know if it's really for me. She said, well, Uncle Bo says, go in the studio, he'll pay for it, and try it. So that's another lesson, try. <laughs> Listen to somebody else because there's more to you than what you know. I think that's a very, very important lesson, yeah. especially if you're a public person. She, she brought me about 15 or 20 songs over a period of time. I'm not just singing the songs, okay. Let me go in the studio, sing a bit. Da, da, da. Time passes. Uh, she said, Mom, we got about 10 or 12 songs, Uncle Bo and I think we'd like to put together and, and, and form an album. I said, well, okay, why don't you do a rough mix on them, sequence them for me so I can see if they hang together or not, and let me listen to them. And I said, wow, that's me? <laughs> because it showed a whole new perspective of myself that I would never have thought of. I would have kept doing what I know how to do, getting very good at it, but the community's changing, so you become irrelevant. And pretty soon, obsolete. That's a very important life lesson. <laughs> yeah, so you mentioned Imagine. Why is the message of Imagine so important in today's time? Because what you think is what you're imagining. Whenever you think a thing, you probably are putting a scenario to it, or maybe it's being given to you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be either <coughs> negative or positive. <coughs> what I believe is that it's either coming from below or above. Mm -hmm. And you have to choose. <clears throat> so the song, which is the title song of the album, says, um, a place of hope, a place of peace, imagined if every street was filled with love. No more hate. We'd all be free. Imagine. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. But, but as I listened to the entire album, I said, oh, wait a minute. 
they all seemed natural to me and everything, but they all kind of had that feeling. So it's like a feeling of a breath of heaven kind of breathes into it. And I can say that now because I wasn't thinking about me. I wasn't going to th thinking about if it's going to be uh, hit on the radio. I mean, that's kind of natural, mm -hmm. but it all hung together. I get just got a nice feeling. <laughs> Feels kind of summery, and um, uh, I'm a born again Christian, so it was very, very important to me to have some songs on it that spoke directly to God and didn't cover it up. It didn't because I'm not a preacher, so if I'm on your platform and that's not sh your subject, I won't speak about that, but I will be it because I can't help it. And I guess that's what I'm passing to people too. Whatever it is you are, that's, that's really all you have to pass to your community, where, wherever you are. So um, now that I see that it can make you such a success, I would say trust the, the message coming from up, <laughs> upwards. And that's mm -hmm. what the, the album Imagine does to me and for me and what I'm seeing it's doing to people. Um, I don't have to be a prophet or have a crystal ball to see. Uh, well, in, in a way I do because I would think, is my voice right, is the music right? But in scrutinizing it like that, every single song, when I hear the music, before the vo vocal comes in, you already like it, you already set up. So whoever would be singing it, they're gonna like this album. So I said, okay, because the music sets the environment. But that's what music does. So that's why it's important what music you listen to. And so that's my message to people and to life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think this album embodies. And I think, of course, because it's um, my daughter's first project, I want it to be a great success. And I'm sure it will be. But I need to ask you a question. What or who has been the biggest motivator for you over the years? What or who? Like it has to be one person? No. <laughs> I just say what? What? Or Maybe. which person or how many? You know, just there has to be one. Well, it, it comes to me that you don't have to, you don't have a reason to keep trying if you don't have any problems or, or challenges or as it were <clears throat> risks or you don't put some skin in the game. And so <clears throat> I would say that the, the biggest difficulty is feeling like I'm not prepared or I don't have the right team or I don't have enough money or um, I'm too this or that or that or I don't fit here, you know, so it's not gonna work. And then to come into the, this time of my life when it's, it's over 40 years, I'm having probably the best album that I've ever done and I know that in the natural, your voice goes, you, 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 your health goes, your figure goes, but that's not what's happening. That's not what God wants to happen. And I feel like I'm doing it God's way, and so the best is yet to come. The voice is, is as strong as it was. I have more range. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the, the greatest influence has been the difficulties, and then trying to see how you're going to start again. Um, you did everything right, and now the whole community's changed. And we had COVID, and that, all that's wiped out. It's not here anymore. Now where are you going to go? Those are the greatest uh, uh, challenges. <clears throat> and then I see what happens that people and situations, I'll say like uh, D. Nice, who presented some of my old music on his club quarantine, which he did because people were shut in. Mm -hmm. When you come to people's aid, you know, they come to yours. <clears throat> And you kept that music alive, and then I've had other great young songwriters bring new music to me and say, "Miss Moore, we like your voice, but we're going to bring you, put you in some some new music." So <clears throat> it was the 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 new and young that has been your motivator. Well, and and my sustainer, they actually bring me their talent, and they make uh, deals that pro uh, prosper us both. Right. It's not like the old record companies where you had a manager and right. a variety of people. So, it's done slightly differently, yes. but the same substance of what you need is still there. So it was the you that motivated you, today's you, D-Ice, et cetera, and I'm sure a lot of our... Um, not ice, because there isn't ice. It's D-Nice. Oh, D-Nice. Yeah, because, because I don't want to insult Mr. Ice. <laughs> oh, yes, that's true. But D-Nice, I did see, I read about him doing this from home, and it became a whole, a whole thing, a disco time when people enjoy. Yes. Now, this concludes 
part two of our chat with our very special guest, Melba Moore. Uh, stay tuned for part three of our interview coming up later this week as we're on the road with the Foxworth Theory. I'm Eugenia Foxworth. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Eugenia Foxworth. Thank you so much for tuning into the Foxworth Theory. We are celebrating going into our third season. Can you believe that? We are opening our doors to sponsorships for the Foxworth Theory. For more information, go to thefoxworththeory.com or email us at pr at thefoxworththeory.com. Thank you.